All right, I put the other battery back in and with what's left of the juice in it, I'm going to use it to crank the engine. I've completely removed this injector line from both ends so that I can move it completely out of the way and I'm going to crank it and see if anything is squirting out of that, uh, that line. All right, so here's the line right here that I've got completely uncapped. This one I've got loosened and that one I've got loosened. Boy, that's really lame. I'm just getting a little drip. Well, no wonder why it ain't starting. Huh. All right, well, battery's kaput. So now, I gotta either quit, haul this battery out of here and go home, charge it, and come back another day, or Hopefully, he'll show up sooner or later with the key, and I can drive down here and fire up my generator and my starter charger and use that as a boost and see if that won't crank it. All right, the gate was unlocked for me, so. Uh, but not before I took the generator off the truck, which was pretty heavy, and tried getting it under the gate in several spots, only to find out I couldn't get it to fit. Too heavy for me to lift over the gate. And then after I just about exhausted myself, he unlocked the gate. So, anyways, now I can drive on down. Oh, well, he had to leave, but he told me not to let the horses out. So I could open the gate and not have them run out. So he recommended I get some horse flakes and throw them in, uh, some hay flakes and throw them in there, and that should keep them occupied. Made it. That's a clever horse right there. What she did was she grabbed the mouthful and then came over with the hay in her mouth and waited. So as I got through, she tried to go out. I had to get out, pull the gate partially closed, get back in, move the truck up some more, and then pull it, get out and pull it closed again. She was the only one smart enough to abandon that to try and get out. Because she knows there's a barn full of hay over there. Well, almost there, except for the dirtiest, muddiest section. And that's worse than ever because we just had rain the past couple days quite a bit. So now I have to debate. I schlep the generator in from this far or I try and drive in. If I try and drive in, I could leave the generator on the bed of the truck the whole time I'm running it. But I'm thinking I might leave the generator out here. I don't think I'm going to have to worry about somebody coming out here and stealing it because they're not going to know it's out here. And, well, it's a risk. I don't know. We'll see. Well, I made it through sort of. What I did was I pulled in that way and now I'm backing in down to where the where the tractor is, but I'm stuck. So it's funny, I thought I was out of the worst of it. And now I'm stuck. There. Made it. See that yellow way back there? That's the tractor. extension cord so that should be good enough well a couple weeks ago I ran this just because I hadn't been running it for a while and it started a little rough but smoothed out and was okay so hopefully we'll be all set today all right for those of you who have been watching several of my video series you haven't accidentally clicked on the Coleman generator series <laughs> I'm just using the Coleman generator to help me today with the Oliver 770 Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, that was full choke. Up a bit. 
bit. I just came over here and this thing's making this weird noise. What the hell's going on? What the hell? Solenoids clattering like a son of a gun. I don't have wire shorted out. So I didn't think I did. Hold on a second. Where's my jumper wire? Alright. Something screwy. What the hell is that? Well, I got the battery polarity in, right? That was weird. Well, in the meantime, this works. So let's uh, put a fast charge on it. I wonder why the hell that was clicking like a chicken. It must have been this solenoid on top of the uh, on top of the starter that was making that noise. Why would that be making any noise if there was nothing? If the key wasn't on, or the key wasn't simulated being on by? Oh, I wonder. You know what? I wonder if this key switch started actually working. Don't forget, I'm just using this key switch to bridge wiring. And I moved some things around, so I got some stuff in different positions. That damn key switch probably was like it was engaged. Yeah, the housing's warm. This damn thing actually started passing some current while I was gone, of course. Alright. I'm going to have to rewire that so that doesn't become a problem. Alright, I got that straightened out. Yeah, I've had it on a fast 20 amp charge for about 10 minutes now. I might breathe a little extra life into the battery and then of course I'm going to use the, uh, the engine start boost feature to give it a little more oomph. So let's see. Let's see how it spins with that. Spinning. Well, it's the next morning, and my battery died on the camera, but I wanted to talk about what happened after the battery died. Uh, I continued to work on it, and what I ended up doing next was I ended up deciding to pull out uh, this bolt right here, which is actually uh, called the head locating bolt on the uh, parts list. There's a second one right here, but this appears to be in the like the low pressure section right in here of the pump. This appears to be in the uh, a different circuit of the pump, and it's different. The size of the head uh, is different than these other two screws. So I took this bolt out and I cranked it with the uh, help of the uh, starter charger and was able to uh, start to get some decent fuel flow out of here. Once I did that, I then reinserted this bolt. I then cranked it again and noticed I still didn't seem to be getting much flow out of the uh, injectors. After I did that, I still had this injector line completely removed. 
and I cranked it again, and I still only seem to be getting a little blurp out of there, but it was a little bit better. And then I was starting to already think, see, in my mind, I expected there to be a healthy spurt out of these lines, and um, that just goes to show you that I don't fully understand what the pressures would be here uh, in this line when it's just cranking but it's actually pretty low now whether that's normal for this pump when it's just cranking or whether or not that's you know the pumps tired don't know but anyways uh, wasn't much of a flow there so I was already starting to, uh, to, to to say to myself that you know I'm pretty sure we've got something going on with this pump it's no longer a bleeding issue I gotta pull the pump but before I decided to pull the pump just for giggles I reinstalled this line and these two lines and I cracked the uh, connections where these three lines go on the injectors and I cranked it until fuel came out of those three and then I tightened them up and then I noticed that the starting changed dramatically it now started to really kind of like limp along um, it was clear that the motor was trying to fire and it was kind of like in some of the previous videos where it seemed like it was almost being helped along by the uh, combustion a little bit but as soon as you took the starter off it would die but it definitely was better than it had been so that made me think that we really were onto something here so then what I did was I cracked um, I believe one or two more lines cranked it and since it was cranking faster now it didn't take long at all before those lines were bled and I started to get fuel out near the uh, connections of the injectors and that was really working well so then I tightened those I literally tightened those as I kept it cranking and within a couple minutes it started to really sound like it was about to start and then much to my surprise, it suddenly roared to life. And I had the throttle all the way up and it, it I mean, it, it stuttered just briefly and then it ripped right to full power, it seemed. It sounded like everything was working great. Uh, I kept it up at full power for uh, a few minutes and when I was satisfied that it seemed pretty smooth, I backed the throttle down to an idle. Now at that point, when I backed it down to an idle, uh, and also, actually, right before that, I was taking note of the smoke coming out of the stack. I noticed now almost all of my white smoke was gone. And most of the smoke that I was getting out of the stack, still getting a lot of smoke, but most of it was blue. I'm not surprised it's blue because I think the engine's tired and it's burning oil. And not only that, but I had checked my crankcase and my crankcase was overfilled. And what was in the crankcase appeared to be heavily diluted crankcase oil. I believe it's heavily diluted with diesel. I think a lot of diesel fuel had gone into the crankcase in the process of trying to get this started. A lot of fuel that was being dumped into those cylinders and not burning was probably going down past the worn pistons and rings and getting into the crankcase. At least that's my theory. But to make a long story short, crankcase was way overfilled. I decided to dump some of the crankcase uh, fluid. I dumped about a quart to get that closer down to the, the safe level or the normal level. But what I dumped out into a uh, container, it was uh, the consistency of water. Um, but it didn't appear to be contaminated with water. There was a little bit of water at the very beginning when I first started draining it. I loosened the uh, crankcase drain just enough so it would just start dripping. And what that lets you do is that lets you get the very bottom of the crankcase to drain slowly enough so you can see if you've got water sitting in the bottom of the crankcase, which I did, or in, in the pan. But there wasn't much there at all. Normal condensation would have explained what I had seen in there. Then when I drained off the, the full flow, uh, like I said, it was uh, very thin and I think it was just completely diluted by, by diesel fuel. So I drained that off and then... Um, Came back up here, bled more lines, you know, uh, oh, I already said that. Got it started. Got it down to idle. At that point, it was idling well. So 
I really felt I had the problem solved. So I was really happy. And it was just in time because my generator was just running out of fuel. So I needed to get everything moved out of the way so I could pull the machine up and try and hook that backhoe up. So what I ended up doing was while I let it idle, I packed everything up. I got everything out of the way, got my starter charger back on the truck, you know, uh, put all my tools away out of the so off to the side and everything, ready to go. Go back to the tractor. Uh, the front loader bucket was full of water. Decided I was going to dump the water out. When I tilted the um, bucket to dump the water out, the uh, hydraulics worked and the engine had a load on it, so I had to give it more throttle. I gave it more throttle, and what happened was after the loader dumped the water, when I released the loader lever to bring it back to the neutral position uh, that then caused the situation where apparently the hydraulic pump loaded up and there was high pressure on the hydraulic pump and so the hydraulic pump started to put a high load on the engine and that really brought the RPMs down and almost started to die so I gave it more throttle but it, it, it didn't have the power it was lacking power definitely so I was hoping that maybe it's just, the, you know, I think I had two more injectors that I hadn't bled, that I hadn't bled the lines on. And I was hoping that, well, maybe it's just running on four cylinders and that's my problem. And I knew that I can't get to that very last injector line because the loader's in the way. But then I thought, well, if I raise the loader all the way up and get the loader arms to their highest position, I might be able to get in there. So I quickly tried to raise the loader. And even at full throttle, trying to raise the loader, as soon as I started raising the loader and putting some pressure on that hydraulic pump, uh, putting some load on that motor, the damn thing died. And then, of course, my battery was too dead. I couldn't restart it. It was cranking way too slow, and I had to quit for the day.